welcome to The Word Made Flesh. This is our weekly review of the upcoming Sunday, The Word of God, and how to incorporate it in our daily lives. Hello. Love is in the air. Is it? Not quite yet. (laughs) The readings this week do not pertain to Valentine's Day. Nothing has to do with Valentine's Day. (laughs) It's hardly Christian. I mean, it is, but it isn't. Save that for another conversation. (laughs) This Sunday is the sixth Sunday of Ordinary Time. Yes. And we're uh, just kind of trekking through St. Luke's Gospel and following that. So we'll get a glimpse once again of what that Gospel is going to be like by looking to our first reading. Yeah, we're in Jeremiah. Which is where we've been, I think. I mean, we've been kind of hovering in the prophet Jeremiah for a while. Yeah. He writes at that very tense time, the ending of the, uh, the the kingdom before the Babylonian exile, and so he has a lot to say today. He does not mince words. Hmm, tell me about it. Well, first he's talking a little bit about those who put all their laurels in the worldly things. Yes. You know, if, if you rely on worldly things or you rely on yourself or others, people, it's not going to amount to much. He gives a whole long list, a laundry list of uh, basically blessings and curses. Yes. Like, blessed are those who put their hope in God, and cursed are those who put their hope in the things of this world. Like, if you look for your salvation, and I think really he's speaking to this his, his own people in many ways. Right. That if you think that the king or the princes or the powers of this world are going to save you, ha! You've got another thing coming. It's only God who can save you. And wow, what a message for today. Right. And it's, yeah, the, the, the analogies he uses, you know, a barren bush in the desert for those that <laughs> rely on others and on the world and uh, a flourishing bush next to the waters and everything, you know, and, and green pastures. And I love that, that image because he says it, it sinks its roots down deep. So it doesn't fear the hot winds or the things that are coming at it. Or even a drought. Because its roots are deep. And that is so, I think, it's just such a beautiful image that if we're living on the surface and we're just kind of touching the the, the constantly changing things of the world, then we're going to be carried away by the storms and the winds and all of those things. But but if our roots are sunk deep into the Lord Jesus, then all of this stuff that goes on in the world really is not going to bother us. And I think it bothers a lot of people. Amen. It does. Which means that maybe we need to look interiorly and see where our roots are sunk. Are they in the Lord Jesus or are they in the things of the world? Jeremiah really does give us something to think about he does. as we go on. So we respond. Blessed are they who hope in the Lord. This is Psalm number one, and it is like the first five or six verses of Psalm number one. It so is. here is where we get out of the starting gate with the Psalms, and they basically repeat the same, the same it idea. Yep. It, it seems to be the fundamental prayer, because remember the Psalms were the book of prayer mm-hmm. for the Jewish people. That, oh yeah, blessed are you, that you hope in God, he'll make you prosper and multiply, but woe to you if you don't look to God. And we get, and even with that, we still get so distracted. <laughs> every day, every week. This is why we have to pray. And maybe that's why it was like the first psalm that was collected or put together or written that it's like, really, our happiness, our contentment, our peace is in God. It is not in the things of the world. And I think, you know, especially for the Jewish people uh, awaiting the Messiah, I think this was a real a real struggle. This past, oh, I don't know, maybe as long as we've been doing this, this little show, kind of helping people enter into the Word of God, one of the things that struck out, stuck out to me so often is many of the Old Testament prophecies and the psalms and the scriptures are all about worldly things. It is all about the promise of land and being content in this land, a land flowing with milk and honey, that you will be settled in the, you know, that everything is very earthly minded. 
And therefore, it never really brings the peace, contentment, and happiness that people are looking for. Because in the Christian mindset, it's totally the opposite. Right. Jesus never talks about happiness on this world. In fact, he speaks completely the opposite. Yeah, he says this world's going to be hard. And you are going to suffer <laughs> because you are in this world and my disciple. But that your kingdom is a kingdom somewhere else. And I think that, that, that there is that transition from the old to, to the new. And I think many people today are caught somewhere in between that they are still living in that mindset of a worldly kingdom where there will be peace and harmony and not understanding that that's yet to come in a new kingdom. I agree. Just a thought. Yeah, no, that's, that's a good thought. Where does St. Paul take us? We're still with the Corinthians. Still with the Corinthians. And where is he taking us? Let's just talk about Jesus and the resurrection. You know, that... His resurrection was not just for him, but in his resurrection, we are all resurrected, you know, eventually. And he's speaking to the doubters and the naysayers yes. among his people that are those early Christians who who may have been coming in with some baggage, particularly like the, the, the pagan or the Greek Christians, mm -hmm. that they could not comprehend how a body could rise from the dead. And, and so many of them kind of had in their minds that Jesus's resurrection was more of a spiritual resurrection. Right. And they didn't have thousands of years of church teachings and documents and things right. like that. Right. And so that would be logically thinking of this world, a human body raising from the dead after three days with no medical or anything, doesn't make sense, doesn't work. shouldn't be possible. Nope. So it's a, yeah, yeah, he rose, spiritually rose from the dead. Yeah, you know? absolutely. <laughs> and it does tie into uh, a, a Greek understanding, a pagan mindset where the things of the world are bad and the things of the spirit are good. Right. And this was an early heresy. Even St. Augustine fell into this heresy and he really believed that everything physical and material was bad and everything spiritual and an immaterial was good. And that's too harsh of a, you know, even when we hear all of these blessings and curses this weekend, it's not just as simple as cursed is the world and blessed <laughs> is the, the, the spirit. It's, it's not that simple, but it's, it's where you put your hope. Right. Because, I mean, you go back to Genesis, at the end of every day, God said it was good. Absolutely. We are his creation. Everything that God makes is true, good, and beautiful. Yes. Now, Even if we mess it up and ruin it by our sin. Our broken, sinful nature makes this world a not true, good, and beautiful place sometimes. Right. Which is why we ask for the infusion of God's grace and why then we are called to be people of blessing. Right. That we are called to bless the world and bless others, to infuse them with grace and to bring them back uh, or even surpass their former glory. Exactly. So Paul's Paul's preaching about the resurrection really does kind of fit in this week in, in a good way. Let's head to St. Paul. We're not going up the mountain. No, Jesus is coming down to level ground. We're going out to the plain. Yes. Yeah, Luke's, Luke's <laughs> version of the Beatitudes or the sermon uh, is not the Sermon on the Mount, but rather the Sermon on the Plain. So <laughs> yes. Luke had a totally different... Uh, uh, approach to this this teaching. He did. And Jesus is reiterating what we've been talking about this whole time. Yeah. That, you know, blessed are those who who suffer in this world, who have a heart and rely on the Lord. And for those that don't and seek worldly possessions, that those who are fed, they will be hungry. You know, though that's just one of the lines. But it's those who have been fulfilled by earthly things yep. will be left wanting. And those, Why? Because all of these earthly things are going to pass away. Right. Those who have sought the Lord, maybe they're not fulfilled right now in the earthly way, but they will be mold, uh, exponentially rewarded. Because once the world passes away, there is the thing that they were looking for and hoping for that they can latch on to. 
Right. Luke's version of the, the sermon and these, these beatitudes and curses, because uh, it's very much blessed are, blessed are, like four blessings, and then woe Whoa. to those, woe to those, <laughs> woe to those, four curses. And they really are all about uh, the experience of the world. Like you're hungry or you're laughing or you're are crying or mourning. Uh, you're all of those things that deal with the, to the security of the world. And if really you just are content in that, it's not going to last forever. Things are going to change. Things yeah. change day to day. Those things that give us comfort. Yeah. And they don't fulfill ultimately. So Jesus' teaching really, again, echoes that where do we find our blessing? We find it in the Lord alone. And then we're called to infuse, I think, this world with that blessing. Yeah, the, the, the brokenness of the world, we're called to elevate and really, in a lot of ways, reclaim for the Lord. What we've kind of thrown away and said, mm-hmm. God does not belong here. As Christians, we're called to reclaim that, whether it's farming and doing those things or things like arts and music and all of those types of things that even just relationships, everything is... We should bless every. We, we, I mean, people are in the habit of blessing their meals mostly, but really, like to bless yourself as you you leave for the day, or to come back home, or to you know to have a, a little holy water stoop by your front door, your back door, wherever your coming and goings happen. To to bless your kids before they go to bed, or when you send them off to school, or to bless your spouse uh, at, at times. To to, to bless your journeying. If we're heading out on a journey, we pray God's blessing upon this or that thing. Like we need to invoke God and his grace upon the people in our lives, the activities in our lives, the events, in our, the things in our lives. Just the more we pray God's blessing upon those, the more we turn them over to, to God. And that's a great point. Because I think a lot of times we say that, you know, we want to offer our kids up for God and things like that. But if we are physically doing it, it has strength and it has power in that. And, you know, I do bless my kids before we go to bed, but there's more we can bless. And even just saying, you know, Lord, I'm going to offer this work day for you. Please bless it. Right. That a morning offering, things mm-hmm. like that. Um, look at Everything. your calendar, what's coming up, and just pray God's blessing upon those things that you see in that calendar. It'll give you strength to, to get through them and to, to live in God's kingdom. Right. I guess that's what we need to take away from this is bless the Lord. <laughs> bless. Yes. Bless. You have the ability to bless in some way, shape, or form. So go do it. That is how we incorporate this into our daily lives. So Jonathan, I bless you. I do not curse you. Today. <laughs> oh.